Hey everybody, we got another brand new Star Wars movie, and this is the first ever standalone movie. Well, unless you count those Ewok movies from way back when, but really, should we? No, I don't think so. This takes place shortly before Star Wars Episode IV, and the Sinister Galactic Empire has of course constructed a new super weapon called the Death Star with enough power to destroy an entire planet. And it's up to a ragtag group of rebels to steal the plans for this Death Star and deliver them to the Alliance in the hopes that a weakness can be found and they can blow it the fuck up. Before it blows them the fuck up. So, I like this one. I liked it a lot. But, I do think it's being just a little bit overhyped. I have seen a lot of people say that this is right up there with Empire and... I'm sorry, I don't agree. I really don't. It's... it's good. It is good, but it's not that good. I didn't even think it was as good as The Force Awakens, honestly. It is better than the prequels, I will definitely say that much. This is the best prequel movie, by far. But it does have a few problems, and I think the biggest problem is the characters. The major players in this movie are kind of bland. I really was not digging Jin Erso, who is played by Felicity Jones. There's just not a whole lot to this character, and she was, I thought, pretty boring for the first two acts. By the time the third act rolled around, she finally started to show some emotion and at least grew something that resembled a personality. But up to that point, not much. And that is not at all what I expected after watching that first trailer. I expected her to have Far more snark. You know, that whole, it's a rebellion. I rebel. Th that line isn't even in the movie. In fact, there's a lot of stuff from that first trailer that's not in the movie. Like this. This right here. This shot with the TIE fighter. Not in the movie. It's in the trailer. It's still on the website. Not in the movie. Of course, we know this movie went through extensive reshoots, and it seems like the character of Jin lost something in the process. In the trailer, she had much more attitude, and honestly, I was kind of looking forward to snarky Jin, but apparently they toned down the snarkiness, and we were left with... nothing. Oh, what could have been. Diego Luna, who plays Cassian Andor... He didn't really do much for me either, honestly. Uh, he just... There's not a whole lot to the character's personality. Faze Malbus, who's played by Wen Jiang, has a really cool name. I, I love the name Baze Malbus. That just sounds awesome. But apart from a cool name, there's not really much to the character except big fucking gun. The new villain in this movie is an Imperial officer named Krennic, played by Ben Mendelsohn, who started out pretty cool, but quickly just became Tarkin and Vader's bitch, and I'll get to Tarkin in a minute, but yeah, didn't really think he was all that strong a villain. And him being Tarkin and Vader's bitch would have been fine if it actually led to something, but apart from a kind of silly but at the same time kind of cool one-liner from Vader, really didn't go anywhere. And again, I have to wonder if some part of this character was lost in the reshoots. I did like the blind guy, Chirrut Imwe, I believe his name is, played by Donnie Yen. He was fun. He had a few funny lines. I liked the idea of having a Force user who's not actually a Jedi, but more like sort of a wannabe Jedi, I suppose. Saw Guerrera, who was played by Forrest Whitaker, was pretty interesting. I kind of wanted to know more about this character. I... Really curious how he ended up with two mechanical legs and some kind of breathing mask. Maybe they're saving that for Star Wars Rebels, I don't know. But the one who steals the show is the droid K2SO, played by Alan Tudyk. He is hilarious. He is a reprogrammed Imperial droid, and apparently when Cassian reprogrammed him, he inadvertently flipped on the bastard switch, and man, this guy is an asshole. He has so many good lines, and is also quite the badass. But again, this kind of illustrates the problem with the characters. The one with the most personality is the fucking robot. How does that happen, even in Star Wars? And it's not that the acting was bad, it wasn't. The performances were just fine, it's just the actors, apart from Yen and Tudyk, didn't really have a whole lot to work with. And given how much clearly changed between that first trailer and what we ended up with in the theatrical cuts, I am genuinely curious what this movie looked like before all of the reshoots. 
did the reshoots really make it better? Was it an improvement in some areas, but it came down in others? I don't know. Maybe we'll be lucky and we'll get some deleted scenes on Blu-ray, but who knows? Now, as far as the special effects, something that is synonymous with the Star Wars franchise, for the most part, they are very good in this movie. They're excellent. Except for one little thing. And if you've seen the movie, you know exactly where I'm going with this. So, I mentioned Governor Tarkin is in this movie. And apparently, instead of just casting an actor who actually kind of looks like Peter Cushing, they decided to take an actor and use CGI to superimpose Peter Cushing's face onto his. And it looks bad. Oh, God, it's bad. I mean, it does look a lot like Peter Cushing, but you can tell it is not a real person because the facial movements are just not right. Honestly, it's just a slightly better version of the Tarkin from Star Wars Rebels. I will give them this much. The voice sounded really good. That sounded like Peter Cushing's voice, but the face, oh... That face, no, a thousand times no. There have been many advancements in CGI technology over the years, and it can do amazing things, but we have not quite been able to bring someone back from the dead. And there's another character that gets the CGI treatment later on in the movie. I won't say who it is because spoilers, although you can probably guess, but that one somehow looked even worse. And that's the final shot of the movie. And, oh God, no, no, no. That was what they chose to end on? Jesus Christ. Like, the final shot in The Force Awakens was damn near perfect. This is the polar opposite of that. And I really don't know why they did this. They did not do this for Mon Mothma or General Dodonna. They just recast the parts with different actors and they looked fine. I could tell who these characters were supposed to be. There are still some good things going on in this movie. The story was pretty good overall, and I did find it interesting that even though it's a story we all pretty much know, it still managed to surprise me a few times. I was very surprised that they actually mentioned the kyber crystals in this movie, which I don't think they've done in a Star Wars movie until now. It's always been like extended universe stuff. And they are apparently what powers the Death Star. Who knew? And I did like how they touch on how even though the Rebels are clearly the good guys, in order to support and fight for their cause, they do occasionally have to do some bad things. In fact, there's a moment where Cassian just straight up shoots a guy in the back to prevent him from talking in case he gets captured. Like, I saw that moment, I'm like, whoa. Cassian, you are a cold motherfucker. I thought Gareth Edwards did a pretty good job with the direction overall. Possibly could have done a bit better getting some emotion out of his leads, but overall the movie is at least shot well. It looks gorgeous. The action sequences were a lot of fun. Donnie Yen gets to show off his martial arts skills in a very cool sequence. And of course there's this big gigantic space battle at the very end because it's Star Wars and they kind of have to do that. And even though they've made eight of these freaking movies, they still managed to throw in some stuff that I haven't seen before. That was pretty awesome. And I was very surprised that they actually brought back Red Leader and Gold Leader from episode four. But instead of doing it through CGI like they did for Peter Cushing, they just took some unused footage from episode four and kind of cut and pasted them in there. And it looked very good. The big Death Star plan heist at the end was fucking amazing. That was so well done. Makes the first level of Dark Forces look like petty theft by comparison. The third act of this movie overall was just outstanding. Apart from that last shot, which, no. And of course, the man himself, Darth Vader, is back, baby, and he is just as much of a badass as he ever was. He is so awesome in this movie. And this time around, we actually get to see his castle, which is apparently on Mustafar, which seems like a cruel joke, really. The movie does have a few neat little Easter eggs here and there, and those are always fun. We have a few surprise cameos, uh, quite a few references to Star Wars Rebels. The ghost was visible in quite a few scenes, including in that big space battle at the end, or at least it was a ship that looked a lot like the ghost, given that there was also a reference to a General Syndulla, 
probably was the ghost. And did anyone else notice the Chopper cameo? If you blinked, you missed it, but he's in there. And that kind of makes me wonder if this is actually going to cross over with Rebels at some point. Like, are we actually going to see the battle for the Death Star plans from the point of view of the crew of the Ghost? Because that would be kind of awesome. So, final verdict. I still don't think this is quite as good as some people are making it out to be, but it is still good, and I enjoyed it very much. If you're a Star Wars fan, then you've probably already seen it by now, but... If for some reason you haven't, I do recommend checking it out. And that's about all I have to say for Rogue One. So until next time, may the Force be with you.